Hey, welcome to Omni Bros Live on a Wednesday. Anything could happen, right? Lou, comics guide, guy. Hello, 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 hello. Happy Jesus. Is it, is it the weekend yet? No, it's Wednesday. Oh my God. It's hump day. Uh, hump day, hump day. We can get through. Hey, Kane, Rise and Phoenix, Lucas. The Brave and the Boys. You want me to send you a link? Do you want Jake on for some reason? I would never say no to having Jake on the stream. If he wants to, he's more than welcome. He's always a welcome guest. Okay. Him Just and second. Tyler Blunt are always welcome guests. But Tyler Blunt is like Beetlejuice. If you say his name three times. <laughs> Where is that guy? He'll pop up. It's tax season. Oh, uh, I, I, I have some stuff about him. <laughs> I've been in close. Here you go, Jake. Uh, okay, so um, I've been in touch with. Uh, uh, first of all, Omni Bros Live. Blah blah blah. Wednesday. Okay, I said all that. Um, I've been in touch a lot with Ryan Sace, his uh, Welsh gaming partner. Mm -hmm. They play um, online games all the time. Um, so. They actually haven't been gaming, which is a shock, <laughs> because Tyler's PC, which he games on, broke. So he needed a new one that cost that much mm -hmm. grand. And he split the payments. He split it between the household and his work. So his his work he works with his dad. So he's going to piss off his dad and his wife. He thinks he's getting away with something, but he's going to get piss he's going to piss them both off. Jesus. So he's in trouble. <laughs> What's up guys? Hello sir. Now Welcome. it's now it's the dream team. <laughs> What is that kid Omni Dog still doing up there? That is ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. This is Jess's ward. I wake up sometimes from Jess to pictures of a crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah even though, my even Jason though Todd. it's 25 cents to vote to kill me, he votes every day. <laughs> <laughs> he's ringing up that phone bill. You know, you know what? I got it. What's going to end up happening is he's going to be your Red Hood and he's going to start a rage bait channel. After yes. he gets it with the crowbar, that's how it's going to start. <laughs> Rage I'm bait. The opposite. I encourage. I encourage positivity. My catchphrase is peace and love. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? How dare you? How he's dare gonna, you? He's going to have eight videos of how Omni Dog is a fake and all this other stuff. <laughs> Rage bait I can't even get it to rain. What's going on here? I can get it. Wait. Yeah. It, there we go. Oh, oh now I'm raining like on your parade. The student has become the master. Look at that. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, he, I don't fine. Know, I don't know what gets him angrier when I'm kid Omni Dog or if I'm kid near Mint. He gets this little twinge of jealousy. <laughs> no. Hey, be kid, kid near Mint. Uh, Omar can adopt you. Everything's fine. He needs a boy in his life. He's got two girls. You're just the right age. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Kane asks a good question. Jess, how was your day with a very fine family? We had breakfast yesterday. That was very fun. Oh, cool. And tomorrow, we're going to spend a chunk of the day at my LCS, Third Eye Comics in Annapolis. Hmm. I'm taking the whole uncanny family in my car with me, and we're going down to Annapolis to check it out. Jake's been there. He knows Ooh. how cool Third Eye is. Heck okay. yeah. But all the whales, they said this guy named Omnidog came in and took every whale from the store. <laughs> They Oops. said it's like when you go see a lake or a river that's been like polluted and they like took all the resources. You know, that was third yeah. eye after he I fractured to think of it as a pond where all the fish are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I came in there with a fishing pole ready to fish, and I see Jess with dynamite throwing it into the lake to get <laughs> to get all the fish out. He's he's fishing in the future. That's right. Party time. Bitch, where's my dinner? Coming. Bring me my dinner, bitch! Oh, that's right. I know she's, not, she's not home for two weeks, right? Right. She's gone. Yeah. Actually, it's two and a half weeks. <laughs> two and a half weeks. Wow. 
Yeah. And Doc Elevator, party time. She's been doing this for ever since Kelly was born. So 33 years, she's been going out to Arizona every spring. If in about two minutes you see Jess look at his phone and he gets real somber, she heard that. <laughs> she could be watching. She does do that from time to time. <laughs> Wait, does this mean we get the yearly Costco pie review when she's out on vacation? Yes. Costco pie. I was one, just one of, at you Costco. Viewers, one of you viewers, get him a, like a milkshake, door dash him a milkshake or something. <laughs> <laughs> Cycle, I don't think is in the chat right now, but it used he, to be like back 33 years ago. So I was in my 30s, so I would have been 32. Mm. I drop her off at her and Kelly off at the airport. I would immediately go get alcohol and cigarettes. Wow. And I would uh I used to because the the idea was what do I want to do that I can't do uh mm. when they're around. So yeah, I'd get drunk and smoke cigarettes and play video games. And <laughs> I used to go um, to Arlington to do um, like my own pub crawl to all the microbreweries that were in Arlington. <laughs> and I'd go vinyl shopping. And now I went to Costco and bought a bag of almonds and got gas. Whoa. And party hard. Uh, yeah, I've been sitting indoors all day because it's been raining like a mofo. Uh, yeah, I sat in my chair all day and oh, I did create a video. Um, that's it. Yeah, but I've slowed down considerably. Like a Tom King book. He's just quietly eating his almonds, looking out the rainy window. Yeah. <laughs> Wondering what happened to my youth. Yes, oh, it's. it's it's uh, I I came home and I I can do whatever I want whenever she's here because all I want to do is read comic books and make videos and she's like okay good get go downstairs go get out of here so <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of something I can do when she's not around. Uh, do you like the risky business slide on your socks thing? Mm -hmm. I should watch that uh -huh. movie. I do love that movie. You missed it about what was it three years ago? The last time that uh, he was left to his own vices, Jess almost lost a foot because of all the sugar he was eating at the time. That's right. That was bad. I that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I made the video where I combined ice cream, cereal, yeah. and candy. That was bad. And I made a reel of it. My last reel that I made, I think, and the only reel I made. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I did. I did go sugar crazy, but now I'm on a diet. I can't even do that. You have your almonds, though. I do have it? my almonds. <laughs> Wait, can we get can we get a live on air almond review? Ooh. <laughs> They're salty and tasty. Now, because because almonds is actually one of the few things that I'm allowed to have in my diet with the fatty liver thing. Right. Um. Because I could have almonds, pistachios, things like that. Right. Do you do plain almonds or do you – because I love the tahini stuff. It's delicious. And as the Hispanic voice on comics, you should love tahini too, right, Jess? Should. Should. I, I should. I don't – they don't sell those at our Costco. I just buy a, a big ginormous bag of dry roasted, lightly salted. Mm, okay. You're, you're allowed to have the uh, – Tahin flavored ones? Where do you get those? Like Safeway? In, in moderation. Yeah. I okay. can, so I can, since I've hit my goal weight, I'm nice. a little bit, eh, that's about three or four pounds away, but I'm pretty much there. It varies on the day to day. Uh, I, I am a little bit more lax as far as what I eat and stuff like that. Like I'm, I've reintroduced wheat bread a little bit, sourdough into my, into my diet. But for the most part, I eat pretty clean. I can have honey roasted almonds, things like that. That's not a problem. Honey, honey is actually not an issue for me. Um, where I messed up is I have to be careful with um, processed meat. So things like regular bacon, oh, no go for my stomach. I had it over the weekend, messed me up. So I'm like, okay, I can't have that. So for tonight. Since we did kind of breakfast for dinner tonight, I had turkey bacon. 
And turkey bacon so far has been sitting a lot better in my stomach than just regular bacon. Got it. I uh, like bacon, but it's kind of like I'm not the best at cooking it. And then the other day at Costco, I guess like this has always existed, but they have pre-cooked bacon where you just microwave it for like 30 seconds or whatever. What? And they have like a 50 pack of it. And I've been having bacon like every meal has now had bacon because my wife doesn't like bacon. And I bought a Costco sized amount of pre-cooked bacon. So it's like breakfast, toast and bacon, lunch, bacon quesadilla, dinner, bacon sandwich. Yeah, so I'm a little baconed out, but, you know, I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> uh what's this one yay <laughs> uh oh here this is for us there we go no oh, yeah. that's 100 percent us that's a great one and here's me yeah no it's animated no yeah. no it's older man Yells older man older that's right it silver is, age, it is silver, silver age fox. silver fox that is correct. survivor of the 90s comics what other names did I use? Uh, um, you're a uh, seasoned, was it seasoned reader? Seasoned, yeah. I think seasoned reader. Oh, veteran, veteran of something, veteran reader. More yeah. experienced, gentlemen. More experienced, yeah. Not old, older. Yes, you I created a Reddit account. Yeah. I created Perfect. a Reddit account just to correct that. And then I left Jake alone yes. with only Bar to defend him. Survivor of the Dust Bowl, if you will, sir. It's what's funny <laughs> is that since then, periodically, people will post a photo of like a trillion books and they caption it what I captioned my haul with. So it'll be like a photo of eight billion books and it'll go, March Hall got pretty crazy, just to like keep rubbing <laughs> salt in the wound. And I'm like, hey, that just means I'm a medium enough YouTube size for them to hate I me now. It. Yeah, there's the hate. I love it. Yeah. Uh, turkey bacon is more processed than pork bacon by Kane. I don't know what it is then because I can't – regular bacon just messes me up. But turkey bacon so far has sat really well with me. Maybe it's the fat content or the grease content of it. I'm not sure. Wait, turkey – oh, turkey bacon is more processed than pork bacon. Okay. Yeah, I don't know then. But turkey bacon sits, sits okay with me. Uh, and here's uh, True Graphic. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. I love the rain. Easier to read comics. Man, oh, mm. Manischewitz. I fall it asleep. rained so hard here for five or ten minutes. I you could not even see out the window. If I had been out on the road driving, I it I don't know what I would have done because there'd be no yeah. place to pull over. You can't see anything. Holy guacamole! Oh, Kane is she's getting the storm we just got. It it rained a lot this weekend when I went to WonderCon, and my first thought was. The poor cosplayers, man, because they were still out there oh. in their numbers, you know, wearing little to nothing or wearing too much, and they were just getting soaked. Here's Marvel <laughs> Bab. Welcome, welcome. Always good to see our UK Bab. Absolutely. You know, uh, not, since you brought up a con, so this is – con season is quickly approaching, right? And this is a topic we've done on the show before, but I always kind of like to revisit it. What are some basic con etiquettes? Uh. The thing is that I'm going to be taking my daughter – um in a few months to our first con and we'll Are see you how going, what huh? one Are you going to megacon we're going to supercon in miami supercon how how yeah. big is that gonna be i don't know i've never been but it's probably gonna be pretty big okay Super sounds less big than mega if i if you were to ask me what do you think's the bigger con megacon sounds bigger I less think than megacon megacon is a little bigger but we're planning to go to supercon in a few months uh, depending if she pulls her grades up um but we're planning to go to supercon in a few months and what are some really standard con etiquettes? First Obviously, rule. I know where you're going. I know right away. Deodorant. You know where I'm going? Is Go it deodorant? Well, <laughs> it, hey, Gabe. What up? Hey, Gabe. What up? Um, hey, man. I, I've actually learned if it's, if it's a big cosplayer one, mm. you always have to ask permission to get a photo taken with them or just take their picture. Yes. So it's always polite to ask their permission. And then if you want to pick with them, you have to ask yeah. their permission for that. Yes. Um, I, <laughs> I, my con experience last one I went to was Heroes Con. I, I did not notice any particular odors. Mm. So I think people may be using deodorant more. Mm-hmm. But I have also noticed more women and more families continue, so that's good. So yes, um, I, think, 
I think the days of the no shower con guy is <laughs> I, I would hope is long and gone. The oh no. The fat nerd stereotype about yeah. comic books, like er every bell shaped person out there, <laughs> all the stinky fatties are being overpopulated now with the normies. Mm -hmm. And the normies yeah. like to take showers every yeah. day. Yeah. And put on deodorant and, yes. and wear different clothes every day. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. I, I yeah. Different clothes. That's a good one. If I've still seen it spell pretty bad, you know, at some certain cons or certain places, but. Yeah, I guess it depends on how crowded it is. Heroes Con was was big, but it was very well organized, keeping the the walking common areas clear, so you never felt too crowded. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday was like twice as busy as Friday was, and you couldn't even tell because it was it was so clear, and people were respecting the the walkways. So yeah. let's see. Oh, do. <laughs> Do not carry 99 comics for Mark Wade to sign and make the guy behind you with one comic wait for you to sign your run of Daredevil or whatever. I, I, I got that face from Gail Simone. So I I, I, I think it was Omni uh, or one of your friends on a stream that said they brought they got like the, the cart with the wheels for their omnis. Ooh. So that was a great choice. We did that. It was a foldable one. Yeah. So I co I go up to Gail Simone. There's nobody else in line, luckily. And she sees me with this box and she assumes I'm a single issue reader. And I brought like 800 Gail Simone comics. So oh. she has this look of dread on her face. <laughs> and I go, no, 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 no. It's not what you think. It's not what you think. And I pull out just two omnis and her face goes from like, to like pure joy because she said she never gets to see them. She never sees them at conventions. And she just like geeked out about the upcoming secret six omnis. She wrote personalized messages Aww. into the books. She Oops. was absolutely thrilled. And from her original face to what I walked up to what it was, <laughs> was, was, was very good. Yeah. I violated, I sort of violated. Okay. I did violate a rule in inadvertently. I I had a suitcase with uh, with wheels. Yeah. And it was when I was getting some books signed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was when I was getting books signed by David Nakayama, like one of my favorite cover artists. And this was at Heroes Con. And so he signed the books and I went to put them in my suitcase, not knowing that I had left it open and all my Omnis just pile out, mm -mm. <laughs> fall out. And I went to get him, and uh, there's a, there was a famous artist next to him. I like who was drawing, and I I bumped him so hard his water started to shake, almost ruining his drawing. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a little red wagon uh, no. radio flyer like Jake got. <laughs> Mine do was a small Don't be that guy. with wheels. Don't do the wagon. <laughs> Don't be that guy that brings a rolling cart or a wagon or I have or that. to. How am I get, gonna carry? Get a home down? base and make trips. That's what I do. Nah, I make I a home base. Whether it's my hotel room, my wagon. whether it's my car in the parking garage or the parking lot, you know, I have a home base. So I go and Lucy and me do it. I've seen him do car. it. Yeah. I've seen him do it. And kudos to him, because I think I'd rather go with his idea rather than the wagon. But that's just I, I get the. That's a good point because well, I don't have to let you in there with like a stroller or a wagon or like a rolling <laughs> luggage or stuff. books instead of a kid wrap it up like so, a baby so everyone thinks it's a baby and you're just pushing <laughs> you know, a stroller like around billy zane trying to get off the titanic <laughs> <laughs> in there that makes like baby noises i have a child so i did have a home base and if i do heroes con again i would again because that's where uh, Kristen and Reed were. Reed had a booth selling his his books, mm. so I could have done that. Yeah, Baltimore get a home base. Con. Like I've done it, where it's my hotel room, my car. Yeah, Baltimore a friend's booth. Hard. Like I might know somebody who has a table, yeah. and I'd be, hey, let me, you know, can I stash my stuff here, and I could just make trips because carrying that stuff around all day makes you uh makes you like a huge obstacle in alley in in like the aisles. Yeah, you're trying to fit true. through stuff. Yeah. You turn around and 
you know, you're bumping people with your, 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 your rolling luggage, whatever the case might be. It's, it's an annoyance to people around you, whether they say anything or not, you're getting the stink eye. So if you have this like the home base situation, you don't have to carry so much with you. You don't have to worry about things getting damaged, loss, having it all spill out on the floor, like diarrhea or whatever. And you have it kind of set up and you you go, you get your two books signed, whatever it is, go back, pick up your next stuff, go to Mark Wade, grab mm -hmm. that, go back, pick up your stuff, go to, you know, uh, Adam so, Hughes or whomever is ready there. And you just make a trip. If I was on Reddit and it was the sub Reddit, am I the a-hole? I'd be the a-hole here. Yes. But I'd be the a-hole who got all my books signed and didn't have to make a bunch of walking back and forth trips. I don't know. Uh, you're in a con. You're walking either way. You're you're getting in your steps. I so. don't know that I have a home base, though, for Baltimore like I did for Heroes. I, my car is going to be way far away. We're not getting a hotel room. I don't... And Kind of circling back, the cons have now become a pop culture thing, right? Twilight kind of changed that years ago when Twilight first was popping because you had the teeny boppers. And now it's become kind of a social thing and it's become more common and more accepted for people of all ages, people of all life, walks of life to go to a con and have fun. Um, Jesus, there's cons for everything at this point now. So it, it's it's really interesting to see the different demographics because when I was a kid, and I was going to cons. When was, I was a kid. When back I was, in the old days. Back in the olden days. It was usually kind of the nerdier guys, right? You know, the outcast guys. The guys you'd see at Magic the Gathering tournaments and things like that. Hey, take so, it easy. Magic <laughs> the Gathering? Why are you dragging me into that? Yeah, we're not going to that, that butt crack convention. <laughs> I'm I laughing like I did back night. in the day. I actually went to a few Saturday Night Magic gatherings. And, uh, okay, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, I had a green blue deck. Um, so <laughs> red, black, that was me. Really? Oh, cool. So, um, yeah. it's, it's become widely more accepted and that's really the, the change of things, the change in things. But yeah, I agree with all the points that you, that you guys have made. I think a big one for me is hygiene. Hygiene has gotten better. <laughs> ask for the photos, please. For the love of God, ask for consent for the photos. Cause you don't yeah. want to be a guy. The snaps a photo of them and goes, um, I'm sorry, I took the photo of oh, you. You know who, uh, you have to be careful with creators too. Um, yeah. What, who is, uh, uh, Neil Adams had an issue if you took a picture of him. Oh, yeah. He started yeah, charging 25 whole, bucks whole, for on. it. Neil yeah. Adams was just uh, mm, mm. 25 bucks for a selfie with him. Who, who am I thinking of? Donnie Cates. Yeah. Donnie Cates just yelled at a person that, uh, I think at Awesome Con, just completely yelled and dressed down a person that didn't ask permission. So if you're going to take pics, you need to ask the creators too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, if a creator, if you have a bad experience with a creator, you got to remember their people too. And they might have had a shitty morning or they probably were, went out drinking the night before. <laughs> um, because all of us here can attest that we've all had not the best experience with certain creators, but then the other person says on this panel, yeah, actually, it was pretty cool to me. For example, I had a, not a bad experience with Mark Wade, but when I met Mark Wade for the first time, he just looked like he didn't give a fuck. Like, he was just there, he was ready to leave, and he was done. I'm like, oh, well, shit, damn, dude. Same thing with Jason Aaron. Jason Aaron, when I met him, looked like he was just having a rough day. He didn't want to be there or whatever was going on. But you guys can attest, you've actually had really good experiences with both of them. Oh, had, Mark Wade was my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> several times. Um, but I haven't met Jason Aaron. I'll have to look to see. I met Jason Aaron. He was pretty How cool was he? Me. He was he was really nice. Um and he was like, you know, when they do like the special signature areas, maybe I've only been to Wonders Con. So it wasn't like his own booth that he paid for where he was charging. It was like when they moved like the the bigger creators to like do an hour of signing for free. Oh yeah. And and he was very polite. He was very cool. Um, I mean, it was a short interaction. There was a long line, but, you know. I'll, da yeah. Daniel Warren Johnson was the best experience I've had. And, I mean, I've had great experiences with everybody, but mm -hmm. he was so happy. He was just had the biggest smile on his face. Yeah. He signed all the stuff I wanted. I, I, I bought something from him. He signed my... <laughs> My wife had a Wonder Woman shirt on, and and she said, "Oh, 
he did Wonder Woman, right? And I said, yeah, that's not the metal version of Wonder Woman. And he did. I bought a shirt of his Wonder Woman that I'm excited to show him if he's at uh, Heroes Con. He so. said, um, I'll sign it anyway. I'll sign your shirt. He was so happy, signed everything, yeah. just grinning ear to ear. And so if you if you can, uh, and that's the only place you can get those little pamphlet books of, of DWJ that he's everybody awesome. yeah. that everybody wants. He's awesome. I've heard nothing but great things about the guy. Not only that, but I follow him on social media. He just seems like a cool ass dude. Um, I think, you really want to hang out with him. I think he's one of those guys like what came across in that Mike Allred interview that the Jake did that I assisted with a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have my intern. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kid brave in the boy. Oh boy. Um, I think what came across from uh, Allred and DWJ was they were just excited and happy to be living their dream mm. of m making a living, making comics. They were just so happy to be able to do it. Yeah, no. Both these creators are, are, are super down to earth because they yeah. know outside of this convention they are nobodies. Like they're just regular dude on the street, but in the convention or a store signing, they got some celebrity status, and they most of the time they just appreciate everything so much. Mm -hmm. They're really cool to hang out with. Yeah, I've said this before. Coolest dude I've ever met at a con, Greg Capullo. Really yeah. down to earth. He'll actually right. talk to you, and he doesn't try to rush you out of the way. Really cool yeah. dude. And that's another thing too. Like you do need to be mindful of your time with these yeah, people. Absolutely. If there's yeah. a line, you know, get your stuff signed, ask a question real quick, and mosey on. Um, don't try to drag out the conversation. Don't try to like you know compromise their time anymore, because yeah. you will get you will get shooed away at some point. Whether it's whether it's the creator, their wife or husband, a handler. Mm -hmm. Or the yeah. rest of the line is going to start yelling at you at one point, too. So you you're going to want to be understanding how much time you're taking up and where and that the conversation's over. Sometimes you have people to kind of read the pushing. situation. You're right. Because whenever, because Scott Snyder and Capullo had the rock star thing where they were signing for two hours and you had to get in line. And I, and I got it. But the reason the line moved so slowly is because Snyder was so friendly and was talking to mm -hmm. everybody. He was chatting them up. And you're not going to walk away from a chance to talk to Scott Snyder when he's, you know, saying how much it means to him. I mean, I told him how much I loved his Batman. And he said that means so much to me because I'm old. I said, I've been reading Batman for 50 years or whatever it was at the time. This is my favorite Batman. <clears throat> then Tom King came along. Uh, but I, he, he was talking. And Capullo was the same way. Like, just what you said. They were talking mm -hmm. uh, to the fans. So... Kane has some good. Kane's a, a veteran con goer. Things you need for a convention: get a backpack, masks, hand hand sanitizer, tissues, yes. large bottle of water, snacks, <laughs> collapsible chair. Scope out the vendor area before you buy anything. Map out the panels. <clears throat> That's important. You have to have a plan of attack for everything. Panels you want to attend, always ask for pictures of cosplay. Take all free samples, always, and budget your money. I was with yeah, that's, all, that's all solid info. Also, comfy shoes. 100%. Yeah. You're yeah, going to be walking all day, every day. Most of the time, the, the if you're lucky, the con floor got the union to roll out some carpet. Most yeah. of the time, it's just hard concrete like slabs you're walking on. That's gonna kill you if you're wearing like work boots or, you know, <laughs> flip flops or something silly no. like that. Get some comfy shoes that are broken in, and you're ready to go. Yeah, there's there's a, a definitely a theme going in the chat where people are saying, "Take a deodorant, take a damn shower, you savages." Yeah. Um, this is a good point. every every day. Okay, every yeah. day, soap and water. Get the nether regions. <laughs> Get 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 the undercarriage. Make it happen. Leaving the con for lunch break and fresh air is a must. You can also unload some of your bag in your car too. Convention food prizes are too much of a scam. That is totally and it's it's always the worst food too. It's like really bad nachos or hot dogs. Yeah, things like that. Oh God, yeah. Don't eat the convention food. You're gonna be overpaying. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna pay ten dollars for a hot dog. Fuck that. Yeah. No. WonderCon had some pretty good food trucks like outside. Yeah, like, oh, WonderCon is amazing. WonderCon is yeah. one of my favorite places for food. Then you yeah, got a bunch of cool restaurants. Like 
right outside of WonderCon, it's Disneyland. So you get a lot of like Disney yep. restaurants around the corner. You got a Laurie's like steak restaurant if you want to be fancy. Ooh. Like WonderCon is good stuff. San Diego is the best. San Diego is the best nightlife. I say that every time. Be oh mindful God, of other people. Kane brings up a good point. People oh God, standing, this. people standing in the middle of the aisle trying to figure out what they're gonna do next. Move That's the worst at Disneyland. What's like, that? That's really bad at Disneyland. I feel oh, like when uh -huh. people are walking and they stop yeah. in the middle and like you're just stuck. That like, is my pet peeve in grocery stores. Oh, gro Jesus. I was just gonna say oh. grocery stores. Oh. Yeah, people are constantly stopping in the middle of the aisle and lining up, and they line just like they line up for books at InStockTrades.com, where you can get your wow. collected editions. Thank you. 30% <laughs> up to like 80% off in the red tag sale. Don't forget your 2% loyalty discount. Sometime in the month, this month, sometime, we're giving away a $50 gift card courtesy of InStockTrades.com, worth 50 bucks. K Dog, if you're out there and you want your gift card from last month, you need to email us because we don't have your info. K Dog, make any email account right now. Yeah. Uh, so K Dog, contact us. Uh, $50 more. Yeah, free gift card. Bleep, bleep, bleep. $50 or more in an order gets you free shipping in the United States, which is just crazy because they package fantastically. Great customer service. That's in stocktrades.com, yeah. people. That's right. I, I love IST. Hunt the damage section. I bought like so many damage books off IST. They've always come like with the most small damage I've ever seen. Like it could be the plastic was torn and you get a killer deal. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. Hey, we are fortunate enough that we actually have somebody in this group right now that's worked many conventions. So, Gabe, what is the biggest annoyance to somebody that is working a convention that somebody can do to you? Speaking yeah. to you personally. He's running down the list of all the things. Yeah. That He's going through the roller <laughs> decks. Yeah, the yeah. gears are turning. Um, <laughs> the, the one thing I hate the most is there's, that there's always that person that is just looking for one book in particular, like one convention at San Diego. I had a guy that came up to me and was like, do you have a, a, a Ninja Turtles number one? And I'm like, <laughs> it'd be behind me if you had it, dude. Like, you know, like it's, it's an obvious standout book. It's a wall book. I was like, oh, let me see if I have a Ninja Turtles number one. Let me go dig for it somewhere for you because we keep that hidden underneath the table or something like that. <laughs> Let me go into the Ark of the Covenant where we keep that stuff, right? Yeah, that's not something I'm gonna like. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep hidden. That's 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 prime real estate book yeah. that goes up front. Yeah. Um, no, wait, what's the deal with that book? Because there are fake number ones, right? Yeah. Or quote unquote fake ones, and then there's a real number ones, right? Isn't that? I haven't seen funny? much about a fake number one, but there's like there a lot of reprints and stuff like that that look like an original number one that people try to pass off. Okay. All right. If yeah. you if you get one, you need to make sure it's slabbed because otherwise you're not going to be able to tell the difference. They're so the counterfeits were so good, and the reprints. Mm. So also, I, if you're going to make an offer, like have cash. If you're going to yeah. make an offer, and be be like legitimate. Like don't be like, oh, that book's a hundred bucks. You take twenty dollars, <laughs> or something lame like that, right? You know, I'll give they'll you be like, or, or it'll be like. Leave. It's a hundred bucks. Um, would you take 80? All I have is 80. I only have 80 bucks on me. I just have 80 bucks. Yeah. All right, I'll do it for 80. And they give me a hundred dollar bill. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would piss me off. That, you son of a bitch. Do you hit him with I don't have change at that point? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I don't carry change. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't I can't break a hundred, dude. I haven't worked comic conventions, but I work hi-fi conventions a lot, so I can share some of the annoyances there. The main one for us is when like, we demo the audio gear that we sell, and there's always this one guy that goes to the local conventions, and he hogs the most expensive demo for the longest period of time. I've seen him walk out like with a sandwich as he's sitting there listening to the headphones for like an hour, and I have customers that come up saying, hey, I want to buy this piece. Can I listen to it, and then I'll purchase one? And he's like, I'm like, hey, man, you got to wrap it up. And he's just eating on a sandwich with his eyes closed oh my God. Oh. for like two hours. And I'm like, hey, man, you want to buy it? And he goes, oh, no, the wife would never let me. And he just walks away. And 
come circles back around later in the day for another two hours. Like you got to keep it open for customers that actually want to buy, you know, like yeah. demo it, like live your dream, but do that <laughs> for like 25 minutes. Don't do it for like an hour and a half, you know, so yeah, if it's not selling you after 25 minutes, it's not going to after two hours. <laughs> That's the real <laughs> problem with conventions is people are there. Yes. It's so people out there. It's just yeah. too people. Really? I go to conventions to meet people, hang out, yeah. meet new people. Like it's all fun. Bring hand sanitizer. Yeah. yeah. Um, bring hand sanitizer. Let's see. Uh breath 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 spray, breath strips. Breath Flipping strips. Like, be, like, I, I mean, when we're talking about washing your butt, I'm talking about washing your 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 your, your trashy mouth too. Like here's, here's bad breath is as bad, if not worse, than deal. Well, and speaking of your trashy mouth, uh, Lou tried the other day not to swear uh, because it was uh, traffic time and we were worried people were listening on a podcast to us. Be mindful that there are uh, children now, women and children first. They're they're sure. there. They don't want to hear you say, oh, oh, oh it's effing Chris Claremont. Let's effing go like at the top of your lungs. <laughs> That was one time I did that. <laughs> um, um, what was it going to Oh, here's a good one. If you see a celebrity or a creator and they're with their family and they're going somewhere else, don't be a dick and hold them up because chances are they're trying to spend time with their family and they're, they're trying to either go get lunch or, you know, just trying to get a moment of peace. Cause I've seen um, that a few times. I haven't seen that, but okay. And don't talk to me in the bathroom. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's a given. If I'm holding, if I'm standing there, the urinal holding my unit, taking a whiz, don't talk to me. Okay, you don't need to go that <laughs> technical. You don't need to go into detail there. Hey, how about that Wolverine 181? Huh? Can you? Oh yeah, hey man, yeah, I'll turn yeah, around. Hey, what do you think about that turtles? I'm still looking for that turtles number one. You got yeah, it. I'm, I'm looking for it here in my pants, but I'm not finding it. I always wanted to meet Brian Azzarello. Hundred bullets awesome. brought me back to comics after a long hiatus. So after we utterly and thoroughly trashed batman damned and i lost viewers because of it you didn't get uh, it and i <laughs> it's not for you yeah, it. yeah we um and we i think we <clears throat> yeah we we didn't care for the book i saw like the next day i saw brian azarello at baltimore con and i went up to him and i said your batman flashpoint book was the my most favorite batman story ever i studiously avoided talking about batman damn <laughs> we talked about knights of vengeance for like 10 minutes and he was great and i was like whoo i didn't have yeah. to talk because he had it there at the table and i was like but this knights of vengeance what a great story and so have he you was watched the show it, it would no. be amazing as he's like it. you're that guy from well, if, it's, it's, if he was nice the whole time his entire tone shifts when he goes so what do you think of batman damned <laughs> and he just I was, stares at you i you know i'm not vain enough to think that um he would have seen it but i the viewers the viewer the big viewer i lost was a famous batman podcast oh that, i remember that that had that has had Azarello on that has had um uh wait who's the artist for Batman Damned um uh he's also the artist for Luther and Joker why am I blocking on his name Lee Burn Ber oh Bermeo yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they had Tom King on and talked about me and talked to Tom King about my show because I said how much I like Batman Tom King's Batman um, and they were best friends with Lee Bermeo. So I was, it, it just occurred to me that maybe they dropped my name to these creators and said, this guy's not a good guy um, because they're an influential Batman podcast. So that's, I didn't think that he was actually watching Omni Dogs Vault or Omni Bros or whatever the five shows were that I burned that book or dumped root beer on it actually. I, I heard your guys' show got a name dropped at the convention at WonderCon this weekend. Um, I was talking to there's there's one table in the whole convention that sells Omnis and collected editions. I forget their name, but I mentioned like I have a you know I have a YouTube channel that I sometimes do shows, and he's like, oh yeah, I know the Omni Bros, and like that was uh, that was it. But you guys got a name drop from from the person selling Omnis there. It's like the Omni Bros are good guys. 
All right. That's yeah. Awesome. There we go. Tell Lou he still owes me a burger. <laughs> That's you probably burgers, uh, you burgers, probably burgers everywhere. Jimmy That's probably what? That's probably Jimmy J. Oh, yeah, man. that name sounds familiar, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we really had great. him on the show. Yeah, he's Mark good people. Teixeira, this is Larry. He goes to cons. It was really cool. Very nice guy. He was all smiles. I got several books signed, and he drew little sketches near his sig. Love that guy. Ooh, speaking of con etiquette, if you tell someone that they can come back for a what, oh. what happened to our, right, right? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to Chris? That is not cool. He went on a Friday, stood in line to, to get this particular artist uh, to do, a, a, I think, a sketch on either a, a blank cover or inside the book. And this, the guy said, I'm not doing that now, but I'll remember you come first thing in the morning tomorrow and I'll do it. Hmm. And Chris was like, and Chris is a super nice guy. Oh, the nicest. He, he's yeah, he's like the nicest night. guy. And so Chris goes, okay, I'll, I'll be back first thing tomorrow morning. First thing tomorrow morning, the guy goes, I'm not doing any sketches today. Oh, so that's not cool at all. I mean, Josh, you shouldn't treat your fans like that. <laughs> Josh, great house. I expect better. From you. <laughs> yeah, he wanted a custom bang remark on his book. I had a guy challenge me to a sketch off. If he won, I would give him like a two foot alien piece for free. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is important too. And don't interrupt people who are trying to ask a question while getting their book signed. Yeah. Don't. Don't bogart when somebody's in the middle of talking to somebody. It's their right. only chance. They don't need you sticking your nose in there. That's right. I also learned the hard way not to mention Omnidog in front of Brian Azzarello this weekend because I <laughs> said, oh, I do a lot of shows with Omnidog. And he goes, <laughs> him? <laughs> and then he, yeah. he like he didn't sign my book. Don't <laughs> Azzarello, Azzarello's a cool guy. He can be salty sometimes. Yeah, also. I picked up on that. that yeah. Don't be mention Omnidog to Kirkman. Just don't do it. <laughs> also, don't do it. Also, just like a fair warning to people, I don't pay up front for sketches or commissions. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Because, you know, and it's not every artist, but there's going to be those flakes that will be like, oh, I didn't finish it. I'll mail it out to you or, or whatever the case might be. And once they got your money, that's it. They got you. And yeah. you might not get it. I don't pay up front for, for sketches. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. I didn't think about that. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, what? <laughs> My first convention, I met Adam West and Burt Ward. My last was Clive Barker and Tracy Lords. Time has changed. Damn. Uh, I, let's see. Oh, I'm way behind. Uh, it, biggest con I go to is inside a casino. So there's plenty of places to eat that are around normal prices. Are people using carts odd in stores or just me? Like pulling it? You are not K-Dog. I know who K-Dog is. Yeah, K-Dog stands for Kid Omni-Dog. <laughs> I use headphones every time I go to the grocery store because I just don't like people. and I, It's easier for me. Yeah. I, I was a big proponent. Back when Walmart was still open 24 hours. Thanks, Obama. Um, <laughs> we, we, were of, we were a bunch of positive society with 24-hour Walmarts. <laughs> we used to be a nation. I know. <laughs> I would go to Walmart at 11 o'clock at night to do my grocery shopping because mm -hmm. there was nobody there. And it was pure bliss. I'd I used to go back in the day after work like at 2 a.m. Mm. And, I mean, I'd, I'd buy like a DVD, a pack of wife beaters. Some beer. Yep. That that you know, this is Vegas, so that's about the time when the strippers hang, you know, hang out at Walmart and do their shopping too. So yeah. All right, take it easy. Hey. Walmart at 2 a.m. was a vibe, man. And you had to be there. Unfortunately, they stopped doing it. Uh, after during COVID, they stopped doing it, and I kind of miss it. Because it was Are if you had to get something late night, you could stop at Walmart and you could grab it. M McDonald's isn't 24-7 anymore either, right? I remember sometimes like at like three in the morning getting a McGriddle. Yeah. Those were, those were the nights. Yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. NYCC and SDCC are not the first conventions to go to. If you, uh, 
if you haven't been to one. Heroes Con would be a great first convention for people. I'm hoping to meet my favorite artist, Josh Greathouse, there. Mm, I, I hear he can be salty, though. Yeah, I paid him $200 for a, a sketch, and he never sent it. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. I heard he does two foot commissions for free. Yeah. <laughs> Kane, okay, so haggling when I was at either NYCC or Ota Otacon, there was wow. a vendor selling Persona 2 Eternal Punishment on PS1. They wanted for it around the time 120, I offered a hundred dollars cash and they accepted. Perfect. And William Lee is right, cash is king. You yeah, can you can have and your chances of haggling are far better with cash. There's yeah, no, there's, there's no fees. Well, got... there's most of the times there's the, the internet connection there sucks. Yeah. And as a vendor, if you want internet there, they're going to charge you like a hundred bucks a day or something Jesus. stupid like that. Really? Yeah, a hundred bucks a day, and it's not even going to be like good Wi-Fi for you to oh, use, okay. like a card swiper or things like that. Oh, I've been to conventions with people like San Diego Comic Con, and I wanted to pay with a credit card, and they did the old school. Jess will probably remember the old ch -ch credit card oh, reader. Yeah, that yeah, thing. With, 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 yeah. With the uh, with the the triplicate paperwork and yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah, or or they call their their store and they have to read your information over oh the phone, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Well, I noticed that Heroes, the last convention I went to, almost all, almost all of them had the little plug-in thing to their iPhone, and were doing credit cards that way. So the Wi-Fi must have been good there. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, we're if you have a wad of cash. People are much happier to sell to you for a lower price. We're doing a convention next week in Chicago, and they were like, hey, do you want us to run an Ethernet cable to each of your rooms for your demos? And we were like, sounds good. And they go, 1200 bucks a room to, to for, an ether, for an Ethernet cable. And we were like, no, nah, we're good with Wi-Fi. Just to run a cable. That's it. Yep. Jesus. Uh. Well, you, they do know we used to do this shit at land parties, right? When we were <laughs> and we had to haul our own TVs and eight Xboxes. Land parties. Now you're dating yourself. Yeah, no, oh, that, that was good times, dude. That, those were good times. Halo man. land parties at my house were were oh, a thing. Man, that, that must was, have been a blast. Fun. And we had to haul those big ass fucking two TVs up three yep. or four flights of stairs. Oh my god! Only for you to forget a cord or something. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, same. That was my generation too. Wow! I'm just kidding. I'm a Wi-Fi. I feel like you can you can just tell I'm a Wi-Fi kid, and I've always been a Wi-Fi kid. Man, you missed out because you're you're a bit younger than us, but you missed yeah. out on the on those on those days, man. The Halo LAN parties were yep. the shit. Ah, I'd bring it back in a heartbeat if I could. Honestly, I would. I miss old school like video game LAN parties like that. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> YP is still waiting for Omni Bros Costco Con. And Kane agrees. So we've got two attendees. We got some nice Costco's here in Vegas. I would, <laughs> That'd be the place to go. The first OmniBroCon held at a Costco. Yeah. This is gonna be the, the Costco food court. We're all just gonna get dollar dollar pizzas. There, when I when I posted um, the show to, tonight, I put hot takes because I do yeah. have a hot take because I was at, getting my almonds at Costco. And I had two bags. So, of course, I'm going to go to self-checkout. You know how there's, in Safeway or someplace, there's the the the, the express lane, 15 mm -hmm. items or less, mm -hmm. and you can go there? At Costco, there needs to be a maximum. Like, you shouldn't go to self-checkout your entire 500-item basket at self-checkout because you are going to be way slower than any cashier there at Costco. Costco ch ch cashiers are like, boom, 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 and you're out. Somebody in front of me was going through their entire basket, and it was taking them forever until I finally got waved over to a different spot. But there were... It, there, <laughs> there, you should have a maximum of like 10 items to self-checkout at Costco. You shouldn't be allowed to have 58 things to, to do. And I'm making the statement, people over 80 years old should not be allowed to leave the house. They oh, should I'm not right. be allowed to leave the house. I do not want them in front of me in Costco or driving or anything else. I Did you get stuck behind an 80-year-old paying with a check? Or 
paying. And with it was the old school money. where they have to do the paperwork for the check. Oh, you know what? And I'm, I'm going to be there soon, so I'm going to self. I'm going to self. Uh, pandemic. Sure. What's the word? Isolate. I'm going to self isolate. I won't subject you to my 80 year old self. You know what I was thinking for Costco for Omnibro Costco Con. We could have special guests. You know, maybe we could get Fred Savage. He's probably pretty cheap, right? He hasn't done Fred anything since Savage. the 80s. You know, we maybe Tyler Blunt. Savage Tyler Blunt can hold a panel on taxes. This, this, we got this going. You get Edward Furlong probably for like you know some heroin. Oh, dude, oh. He's, he's Edward Furlong. He's clean now though, right? He's, he? he's yeah, on, still. He was on Rosenbaum's podcast like a week ago, I think. Oh yeah, who's Edward Terminator? Furlong? Kid from the little kid from Terminator Two. Oh, 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 that kid. That's a bummer. Yeah, he's out. He had it rough, man. But so let me tell you the wonder that is Sam's Club. <laughs> Sam's okay. Club. The no, nah, it's not the same. The Mirror only thing Universe that, yeah. Star Trek of Costco. Walmart, Walmart, Walmart Costco. Costco. Okay. I am telling you, I think we get Fred Savage for a sixer. And a, a hot dog from Costco. He can't be that expensive. <laughs> Fred Savage. So, so Sam's Club, you could do self checkout on your phone. Uh, that's cool. So I get my cart and stuff. I go off to the side somewhere. That. I go off to some aisle somewhere where nobody's at. I scan my cart. I pay for it, and I walk out. That is cool. Mm-hmm. But my wife's been asking for a Sam's Club card because she likes their chicken nuggets better than Costco, but she needs Costco for everything else. Smothery mm -hmm. Lions agreeing with you, Gabe. Um, yeah, there you go. Here's a question that's good for Gabe because Gabe sold a lot of comics, floppies and uh, CGC. Aren't prices for comics inflated for conventions? So it's not a good place to get deals. Is that true? It's true that the prices can be inflated. It all depends on the vendor that you go to. Some of them might be cool. Some of them might be assholes about their pricing. But that's where your negotiation skills are going to come into play. Mm -hmm. There's never a problem with saying, hey, I, you know, can I get this $100 book for $80 yeah. or whatever the case might be? There's no problem with saying, hey, you know, prices on eBay for this book is here. I'm willing to pay you that amount for it. You know, there's no problem doing that. The worst thing that's ever going to happen is they're going to tell you, no, thank you. That's it. And then, and then you move on. They have to, I mean, vendors have to pay the, for the booth fee and they've right. got expenses too. So I can understand why they might jack up the prices a little, but. Not I just mean, the booth fee, but they got to pay for everybody's hotel. Okay. Everybody's food that's with them. Um, depending on how far they went, probably had to pay for their travel. Like the torpedo, they paid for our airfare, you know, hotel rooms, reimburse us for like Uber rides, all that kind of stuff. So there is there is a large overhead for these conventions. Yeah. So but nobody cares about that. I don't even care. I know that you're paying a lot to be here. I'm not paying doubled eBay prices for a book. So yeah. Jake, what are you doing? Are you trying to sabotage the chat? No, or I was just trying to talk about comics. <laughs> this is the Wednesday show. We don't talk about comics. Oh, I got to be on a Monday show someday. Jake's here talking on the panel, and then he's like, let's change the subject. Okay, I can talk about comics. I read Ultimate Spider-Man number three. Okay. Uh, don't the, spoil it. The yeah, third Omni it. or the third issue? Third issue of the new stuff. Oh, Keep the new stuff. Okay, I was sorry. I was thinking yeah. of. The old stuff. No, no, I won't spoil it because Gabe hasn't read it. Um, it's great. I mean, it keeps going. It keeps getting better and better. Um, is, is Hickman writing all those ultimate yeah. things? No, he's only writing Ultimate Spider-Man right now. Oh, okay, and there's Ultimate. Wait, is he? Uh, is there Ultimate, ultimate Invasion? Right? Is the... Well, no, ultimate, ultimate Invasion that led into the, the yeah, new Ultimate into Universe. It. Yeah. Okay, so that was so the Black first Panther, thing. and there's X-Men that are written by different people. Right. Okay. Black Panther, X Men, and Ultimate uh, Spider Man. Those are those are the titles right now. They're they're great. Uh, they're great to varying oh, degrees. I still haven't read the new issues of the new issue of Ultimate Black Panther. That was the one that I was like, eh, this is probably one that I'll probably drop. I'll, I'll give it the first arc, but I might not stick with this one. So far, I 
I read a book that you recommended to me last time I streamed with you guys. Uh, I read Human Target, and oh my god, it was fantastic. Right, but, uh, Human Target. I'm like, I'm suddenly sh- skyrocketed to wanting like a like a bigger format of that book because mm-hmm. that art is gorgeous. Well, you'll get it because I bought the standard hardcovers, so I'm sure it'll get an absolute for your absolute collection. I don't want any more absolutes. I'm down to just one single absolute that I need, and I'll have every single one. So I don't want more absolutes. I want to be uh, free. Wh- um. Oh, Javier asking the important question. Last week, how did the honeydew list go, Lou? It went well. I got most of the stuff that I had to get done. done. <laughs> um. For the most part, but now I'm back in the office and I'm back to working, so I don't have a honey-do list. I just have work. What was the worst to-do list thing? The what closet. Was what was it? The closet. Was it organizing it? No, it was getting rid of stuff because I have, I have, I have a lot of clothes. I have a lot of uh, shoes and stuff like that, and I just had to get rid of a bunch of stuff that I don't use anymore. Oh, so you were you were culling out the items to donate and trying to get smaller, downsizing. Yeah. This doesn't yeah. spark joy anymore. That's my favorite thing, dude. I, I I have no attachments. I throw away everything sometimes. Um, I'm pretty bad at it. I mean, I like when I sold my house and moved, I just threw away like everything that I could. I was like, forget this stuff. I'm not bringing it to the new house. I yeah. When we downsized and moved to this place, I looked in my clothes closet. I had actually I had like three closets and it, this closet space is limited here. And I just said to Patty, you decide, what do you want me to wear? And she said, OK. And she was ruthless. She went through and just got it all down to like one closet of clothes. Now, that was great. That was a lot of stuff they got rid of. That was a lot of bowling shirts that went out the house. <laughs> those out. stayed. I insisted that those stay. There's a lot of shorts. It's a yeah, there are a lot of shorts and bowling shirts, but I kept the bowling shirts and it's almost bowling shirt season. If it just warms up another five degrees, I can start wearing my bowling shirts. There you go. Linen is big I'm down here. Google I'm what a bowling shirt is because I'm actually not sure. A bowling it's shirt? Like oh, a button up shirt. Out. You're missing out, man. You like a floppy button up shirt? Like, but it's like kind of heavy, almost like a oh. almost like a jersey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're really fun. You can wear them with a t-shirt underneath and the and the shirt uh, open. You can button it up. It's very versatile. You can wear it bowling or just around the house going to Costco or whatever else. <laughs> it doesn't button up all the way, so you can always have your neck, your, your chest hair kind of poking out, too. Yeah. You know? yeah. If you had, like, a gold medallion, then you could be super slimy. And, uh, you, can, you can get them. I have Simpsons bowling shirts. I got a big Lebowski bowling shirt. I mean, it's Dang. a statement. It's a choice. Yeah. Honestly, man, I think you need to wear one the next time we do a live stream with Jess. Yeah, as I am York, down. Let's get matching York. bowling shirts. Oh Let's my do God. Hawaiian shirts while we're at it. Hawaiian shirts and bowling shirts. Oh, yeah. We, got, we now have a dress code for the show. <laughs> I have nothing but Hawaiian shirts and bowling shirts. So, teen Omni yeah. Dog, you've grown up just on this show. Times change. You know, voice starting to crack in hair in weird places. Yeah, yeah that's uh, why I need a bowling shirt because I finally have some hair sprouted up. Finally, there you go. <laughs> Show I don't know that this is the right panel to answer this question, Spooey. I've held off ordering X Men: The Hidden Years as I've cut back on my comic purchases. Is it time I finally dive in? Has anybody here read X Men: The Hidden Years? That's the John Byrne stuff, right? I haven't read it, but if my my. My suggestion on anything you buy is if you're questioning it, then you don't need it. Mm. But he's held off ordering it, so maybe now he's ready to buy it. Are you are you on the fence? It sounds like you might be on the fence. If you waited longer and it went out of print, would you regret it? Oh, and don't everybody regrets that. That's oh yeah, I wanted that Excalibur book all of a sudden. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You don't have to attack me. Jeez. Um uh yeah, I did a actually Spooey, I did a overview of that book. Uh if you want James, if you want to find that for me, James, yeah, James is still in the chat. I did an overview for that book. If you want to check it out, it actually looked pretty good. Yeah. I kept it. So um I mean if you're a John Byrne fan, then yeah, but again, if you're questioning it, then it's 
you probably don't need it. That's the um, thing. If you question if I should read this or need it, most likely probably don't, you know? That's a good point. YP is reading Berserk oh, and Red Sonya at the moment. And not only that, there are so many different ways to read something these days. With Marvel Unlimited, with the DC app and everything like that. Why don't you just read the first few issues of it and then see how you feel about it? Instead That's of a good wasting point. Time, instead yeah, of wasting I should do that more often. I usually just dump jump in with both feet. Yeah, Superman Silver Age Volume One. Ooh, yeah, I'm five hard issues do. in. I'm five issues in now. <laughs> You've that's, had it for three weeks. That was that, that's okay. fair. That takes, that's about the average time it takes to read Silver Age. Book. <laughs> that is not far off from what I would expect. Yeah. You gotta take it because you I it, you gotta take one issue at a time. And you gotta let it marinate. You gotta let it breathe. And breathe. You're reading a Game of Thrones novel when, yes. you, when you get through five issues of that. It it is yeah. It's They're I daunting. told you not to get it. Dude, we've me. always we've always told people Silver Age is a different beast. Yeah, Golden Age is even worse. Yeah, but but you have to be yeah, really yeah. in love with that kind of stuff. Or be yeah. really curious or have some kind of appreciation for it. If you're like, I just want to read the beginning of Spider-Man, good luck. Cause it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough read for a little bit. And every yeah. time Jess said it's not for you, you wouldn't like it. I was like, I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna <laughs> and then I read the first issue and go, Wow, man, that was pretty silly and didn't really have any consequence or character development or an arc. He goes, Just stop it, you're not gonna like it. I'm like, I'm gonna finish it. It's a pride <laughs> thing at this point, you know. Yeah. It's a pride thing. Yeah, yeah. You just sometimes describe. you gotta learn that way. You gotta just you know read the Silver Age stuff and be like, all right. Well, a, this is written for five year olds. You know, six year olds back it's in the nineteen sixties. For five year olds though, you know? like there's a lot of words. I kind of <laughs> skip past the the text of squares and just read well, the words. <laughs> here's here's how you should read it, Ben. You should if you're reading a book like Decorum by Hickman. After you're done with it, you need a palate cleanser. You need a little sorbet. Read a couple issues of Silver Age. That's, then you go read yeah, something yeah. else, come back, read a couple issues of Silver Age. It's not a book yeah. even that I would sit down and read from cover to cover. Yeah. It's like a sip in whiskey. It's not one that you I – mean, I, I don't drink anymore, but it's like you just take a little sip as opposed to pounding it like other books that I do. It's the way I, I tell people to read Watchmen. You read like one issue or two issues. Yeah reflect on it for a little bit, come yeah. back in like a day or something like that. But you can jam out Watchmen, you know, in a, in, in a weekend, no problem. But you're going to be missing out on a lot of things because yeah. things get lost. Sure. Same with Silver Age. There's a lot going on on these Silver Age books. What, what, what we see these days that happen in six issues happens in like one issue of like a Silver Age book. It also, it's, yeah. it's, it's everything. It's, Beginning, middle, end, epilogue, next story, all in one comic book. I just got done with like a huge Brubaker binge. So all his books were so quick and so fast and so distilled to just like a quick story that I, when I got to Silver Age Superman, I, I went in with this cocky motivation that I could tear through the Omni. <laughs> and from the first issue, it was just molasses. Like the issue is like <laughs> Superman, someone sneaks into the Fortress of Solitude and Superman's scared and having bad dreams and like, Oh my god! It, I was like, "Wow!" I finished this entire Reckless book in the time it took me to read one issue of Silver Age Superman. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that shows you the difference be because in Silver Age, not only do you have the character discussing what he's going to do, there's the caption box telling you that the character is about to do this, and it's in every panel. There's a caption a box that those, explains, right? yeah. Cause it'd be Absolutely. like, it'd be like Superman wakes up and says, good morning. And then he would, in the panel would be him going like, good morning. You know, and it's like, why did I just read that twice? Yeah. That is the problem with all silver age books is there's exposition and cap those caption boxes. How do you feel? Sometimes... About... No, go. Sorry. Sorry. no, go ahead. I'm done. I was going to ask Jake, how do you feel about the Batman of Zurin R? Cause that, that could throw you off a little bit. I don't think it's not so I, my experience was like, I've read the, the Morrison stuff, but I never read what that was based on, Ooh. you know? Um, but every time it's come up, like in the Z Zdarsky run, I've always thought it was an interesting concept, you know? And I love that they were able to take something from such a long time ago and make it somewhat relevant and somewhat modernize it and kind of flip it on its head. So I'm down. 
but like i don't want to read like i don't want to read 45 minutes and the the thing is like it's batman pranking superman you know like <laughs> and then they end up they end up and eating superman a cake together pranks him back <laughs> comics code, listen comics code authority silver age is not for the weak that, yeah. that's a good point with the comics code yeah especially with dc silver age was like that like there were oh. way more stuffy shirts type people working at dc where marvel was a little bit more kind of fly by your seat and a little oh, bit yeah. more exciting but if it's still you're reading you're literally reading books for six-year-olds so it's just this intense everything yeah. has to be explained everything has to be solved there has to be a message there has to be a lesson learned like everything in, in one book there is somebody from the Marvel Masterworks forum that is typing a comment right now and is pissed. <laughs> I am sure of it. Here's the thank you, James. The Hidden Years Omnibus Overview squeezes. It's less questioning the content and more. I'm running into space limitations here, so I have to select what to buy more stringently. Ooh. And Josh is offering you 10 bucks and shipping for that <laughs> Superman Silver Age. Uh, Take it, teen dog. It, Wait, you said you what? drew that guy a two foot tall alien drawing. I want a three foot tall alien drawing. You uh, might throw that in there if you ask him. Uh, I'm having a hard time tracking down the wind hard covers. Are they called something special? Because they are even hard to find on eBay. Uh, I had no problem getting them when they. I have three of them. I think that's all that's out. Uh, that's a good question. Jake, why don't you use your impeccable search skills and see what the wind hard covers? How how can we help Doc Elevator? I'm searching for Batman bowling shirts right now. Have your <laughs> super producer James do it. This one's only 52. It's a DC Batman Dark Knight bowling shirt, dark gray. I think I've got to get it. Um, are these the hard covers? Um, yeah, your book three yeah. hardcover. Are they just out of print, or are they still? Like all the single so. issues. Ooh, I think even in stock might still have them. You think we could get Corey Feldman to come to the Costco? <laughs> oh my God, he oh. has the most punchable only face. Only if he brings, only if he brings the Corey's Angels. Oh, Wizard. have you heard his album "Angelic to the Core" or whatever? It was? Yeah, it is. And I saw cool. the, I saw the video of the dancing angels. Is that the album with "What's Up with the Youth"? I think so. <laughs> I heard that on Howard Stern, and it was it's kind of red. Bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, yeah, there's. Oh, like, ISD has a one. No, that's a free paperback from one. Right? Does Number he ever three. stop writing? Who's writing? Tinian oh, Tiny stops. Onion. Yeah, Tiny Onion never stops writing, except for oh. when he goes to the gym because he lost all that weight. But I feel like he's writing books in the gym now. He might be. Um, Lou is right, Omni Dog. It's time to graduate from bowling shirts to pocketed guayaberas. More yes, sir. Did I say it right? And linen and seersucker camp shirts. Mm -hmm. Optimum airflow. You're suggesting? Okay, wait. You're suggesting I'm I change my wardrobe to guayaberas? Have you ever had one? I have not. You've never worn a guayabera. Uh, say it again, then. Well, I like how he says it better. Well, yeah. I like it. <laughs> so too. How do you say it? Oh, I hate these shirts. I hate well, these I shirts. It. Oh, gay. No way, dude. No, these no, are the listen. worst. In Put the middle up. of summer. Wait, can we see an image? The humidity. Yeah. Oh, those things breathe amazing. No, those. These are like the most like. <laughs> you, you look like <laughs> a drug dealer. They, they are. They got to be in Florida and stuff. Like your uncle at the at the carne asada. Who, when you're trying to cook the meat, he comes over and tries to take it over from you. Like, you <laughs> he does a worse job. Look, you will probably look like a drug dealer, but you will be cool and comfortable the whole time. <laughs> and these are the most just like stereotypically like dirty like Hispanic shirts. I hate these things. Oh, I sent a Batman so well. shirt to Jess that we're gonna match in. <laughs> we're gonna match in. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> it looks cool. I'm I'm a bowling shirt kid now. <laughs> what was the shirt that homer had when he was on a bowling team pinheads was that i have yeah. that one yeah yeah i feel like uh, jess also has the mr plow jacket oh if it was available i'd get it uh here you go you could be a magnum pi 
I'm not Ooh. saying no to this shirt. That's a cool shirt. Here, I'm saying that. Red, the Super Mario one's pretty dope. The, uh, I like that. Mario what's Sunshine. The what's the back look like, Jake? Uh, let's Do we see have if I can a. Find it. We have a contender. I don't. I only see the front. So you need to know what's on the back. Seventy-four. Bu- Jess, I'm telling you, get a guayabera. It'll change your whole outlook. Just wear is it that, for summer. Is that what we're seeing now, or what are we seeing? No, that's just a Magnum PI shirt, which I oh, really. Oh, like. oh, yeah. These look more fun. There's the back. You get some cool uh, birds. Here's where your chest hair goes. Oh my god, the back is so cool. <laughs> Here, I'm sending it in the private chat. This is way better than I I thought the back was going to be blank. This is dope. <laughs> uh, let's see. Click the second link that that shows the back of the shirt. That is cool. Oh, okay, this is the back of the <laughs> Dark Knight bowling shirt. I found a cool uh, Star Wars one, but it was seven hundred and fifty bucks, so that's a little above my budget. <laughs> what? Wow! Okay, so there's the back of that. That I don't know. It looks ironed on to me. Yeah, yeah it kind of does to me too. That might be cheap, and it might just dis- be destroyed after one wash. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's Where getting. No one's. Go- no one's built going bowling and getting drunk in that shirt. It's going to get ruined. <laughs> yeah. Everyone squishes on we- my dreams. <laughs> It well, it's either that or you get yourself a, a, a chinty shirt that survives the laundry once. Dude, I'm telling you, get a guayabera, Jess. Don't do it. They suck. <laughs> AS is uh, agreeing with that. Could lead to a counter-revolution. Next Imagine it, it's got to be one of those or a 60s pocketed resort shirt, which is halfway between the two styles. Mm. How about we all just get members-only jackets? <laughs> members-only? I remember wow. that. Wow. That's been a minute. <laughs> Kane's saying that's Sopranos cosplay. It's 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 cocaine dealer cosplay. <laughs> well, think of how good it would be when you do the segment where you try to pronounce the you know the words you're an expert on in your I can't even say it, Guayabera. I feel like I said it worse than Jess. Guayabara. It's gonna make it Guayabara. it's gonna make it more authentic. Guayabara. You know, I, I was I was thinking today because I was looking at um I was reading a post, and there are certain kind of shifting away a little bit. There are certain characters that are so related to the actor that you just can't you can't separate them from them. James Gandolfini as Tony Soprano, even if they were to remake The Sopranos, it, I mean it's they, James Gandolfini. That's who you see as Tony Soprano. Well, they say dig up his body, it's not gonna happen. No, I mean, didn't they use his son now? Whenever they do soprano stuff, they use his son, which is like for the younger stuff. For the yeah. for uh the movie they did two or three years ago, something I forgot the name of it. The Saints of New York, Newark or something. Yeah, like the Saints of Newark. Who who do you guys think is synonymous with the character at this point? Because Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, I feel like I can't ever oh, imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Wolverine. I agree with well, that. They're, they're going to run into the problem with that because they're going to have to recast them soon. Yeah, they're aging I mean, out. They, it is what it is, but, you yeah. know. Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Kane, mm. yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's just Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and I think, hot take, he looks better with the goatee than without it. Yeah, I do too. I think he's going to go back to the goatee. He's starting to show his age. He's really starting to show his age now. Hmm. RDJ. I still see Sean Connery as uh, as James Bond. I see him as the Highlander. I don't think I've seen that. Jess, you definitely don't see him as a <laughs> Scott. Who was he in a, a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen that ended his acting career? Oh yeah, uh, Al, Alan Quat Quat uh, Quarterman. Quarterman. Yeah, Quarterman. Yeah. Uh, hot take: I didn't hate that movie. I dug I've it. Seen it. I enjoyed it. Actually, it's, it's, it it's, cool watch? Enough. it's not it's not super spectacular or anything like that, but it's a it's a popcorn superhero movie. Yeah, I thought it, it kept my interest. I cared throughout the whole movie. I stayed. That was, a, that was like the last movie he made, though, was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I've got one. Um, Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. <laughs> <as Dalton. laughs> Wait, how about? I thought it, I thought it was uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Hasn't seen Roadhouse. Roadhouse. 
I've only seen I'm, the Jake Gyllenhaal one. There's another one. Don't do this to me, man. There's only one more way. He's gonna kick me off the show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I will watch. <laughs> I will watch Roadhouse when you watch Wizard of Oz. Ooh. But you have to put Pink Floyd on vinyl while you do it. Right for the first like ten getting, minutes. I feel like I'm getting the worst end of the deal here. What? Oh, oh okay. no! Dude, Wizard of Oz is awesome. Dude, not as, not as and good then good. then you got to go watch Return to Oz with that crazy little girl and just have a weird experience with that. Movie. And then you got to watch Oz the Great and the Powerful with James Franco, unless he's canceled still. Wait, I what don't... about the Wiz? Where does the Wiz land in this? Is that that musical? With That's Michael the one Jackson? with uh, Michael Jackson yep. and Diana Ross and everybody. Yeah. And then you got to watch Wicked when it comes out. <laughs> uh, I saw Wicked on Broadway. It was Boss. Uh, okay, so uh, upper management's gone for two and a half weeks. Mm. This is the perfect time for me to see Roadhouse. Yes, so is. tee up Wizard of Oz and prove to me that you're watching Wizard of Oz, and I will watch Roadhouse before I rewatch all of Christopher Nolan's Batman, which was the first thing I wanted to do. Okay, we can do that. I could, I could probably squeeze in Wizard of Oz at some point this weekend. What is it, an hour and a half? No, oh. it feels longer, isn't it? Uh, My wife is sitting on the couch amazed that I've never seen Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Wizard, you never saw the Goonies either, too, dude. You got to go it. it. One I hour, 42 minutes. Go see the Goonies right now. I haven't seen the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's the only two people here who've seen the Goonies. <laughs> Spoiler alert I haven't seen the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> okay in my defense i'm the only one here who could say the goonies was before my time so wait hold on uh, hold on so monster squad or the goonies gabe goonies goonies is better than monster squad monster squad is cool but only the only thing cool about monster squad is when they kick the wolfman in the nards that's it monster yeah. squad doesn't have the truffle shuffle which is even i knew about that i haven't right. seen the movie and and um Goonies has Joey Pants in it, like a young Joey Pants. He's in there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And he gets bit in the in the, in the nuts with uh, chattering teeth. What? Oh, in okay. in what movie? Goonies. The Goonies. Hmm. What should I see first? Goonies? Oh, well, you haven't seen it, so you can't say. Okay, wait, Gabe. Is now the time for me to see uh, Sex Drive? Um, the director's cut. cut? <laughs> you, do it I, as do far it. as recommendations let's see what have i watched i've watched the punisher where he blew up the guy in midair with the uh rocket launcher bazooka uh sex drive uh grandma's mom, boy grandma's boy oh grandma boy is funny yeah uh all of those i feel like there was another one that people that people recommended uh strippers I, from mars <laughs> um actually this would be a good time for me to watch that too uh i mean not sweetie i don't own that movie <laughs> freaking jake um basketball have you seen basketball, basketball yeah. i have not but i haven't seen the puppet movie either team america oh, oh that was great I've, that, yeah. that's another one you gotta watch the director's cut version of just yes for, you do I know just for exactly. the, the, the muppet Sexy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I need to see I feel like I need to see uh Team America before I see Should I see Team America before Sex Drive Director's Cut? No, see the Director's Cut. See watch okay. Sex Drive cuz you've seen the, you've seen the original like theatrical version, but the Director's Cut is out of control. Cuz that movie really made me laugh hard and so did <laughs> Grandma's Boy. I mean <laughs> Those like, movies are great. I love those movies so much. I mean, yeah, they they sound. I mean, a sex drive. I think was actually really wholesome, despite mm -hmm. its name. It was very sweet at its core, but it's also it was also really hilarious. <laughs> uh, I love James Marsden in it, the brother that has yeah. the joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he I is great. I had a pretty messed up childhood. Now. I saw all the Death with Death Wish movies. I saw a whole oh, bunch one of and two are great. Oh, Death Wish is great. I love the one where yeah. he takes the rocket and he blows up the building with a minute. 
I love Death Wish. Um, I saw RoboCop at a young age. I saw The Exorcist when I was about seven. Jeez. Are, why yeah, are you allowed crazy. to have a child? I, I, hey, I do not make the same mistakes with my children <laughs> as my father did with me. Um, but I never saw The Goonies. And I only saw Forrest Gump about a year ago. Oh, I cried all the way th- out, throughout Forrest Gump for some reason. Some Did you see the deleted that... scene from Forrest Gump with Martin Luther no. King? Wait, what? Yeah. SNL did a funny Forrest Gump skit a few weeks ago. I, I felt some type of way about Forrest Gump because Jenny, for me, is from the streets. Before the end of that movie, I'm just like, okay, so you love Forrest because he came back to take care of the kid, but you're dying now? Of AIDS? So- Whoa, yeah. I haven't seen Forrest Gump. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, Jenny's from the streets. I felt some kind of way about that. Well, Jenny had a rough childhood. That was I the 60s too. for you. Well, I mean, her father, you know, was yeah, a, yeah, you know, yeah, was a diddler. Bad. Yeah. Was, her father was not a good person. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Are you for real that there was a Martin Luther King scene? Yeah. That got deleted from Forrest Gump. Yeah, it involves a t- it involves a German Shepherd dogs. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Huh. Is it only available if you buy the DVD? It's online. I would play it, but like we'll probably get taken down. But oh yeah, no, we, we can't do that. Okay, I'll yeah. look for it on YouTube. That's interesting. I don't uh, know. Oh, here's some iconic roles. Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. I don't. Mm, I don't know. I think you could recast that. Really? Yeah. Kevin you Conroy. You think a Chris Pratt one, you wouldn't go see it? I'd go see a Chris Pratt, but I like Chris Pratt. So. Kevin Conroy is Batman? That's iconic. Yeah, Mark that, Hamill is Joker? Voice. Those are the voices I hear in my head when I'm reading comics. <laughs> Al Bundy. <laughs> no, hey, you cannot replace Al Bundy. Okay? No. Ed O'Neill is Al Bundy. Uh, Ron Perlman Hellboy? Yeah. He's great Hellboy. Yeah. No, I see him as a uh, damn it. Um, Blade? there's two things I see Ron, Ron Perlman as the beast from Beauty and the Beast, yeah, oh, yeah. with Linda and, Hamilton, uh, whoever he was on Sons of Anarchy, Clay, yeah, he was yeah, great Clay. on Sons of Anarchy. Um, I feel like Hellboy is under enough prosthetics that I could see it. You know, I'm cool with other actors being Hellboy, but maybe that's my hot take. I'm in the same boat as you, the Wiz like, is amazing. Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible. I think that can get recast. Tom Although, Cruise, no, no. Tom Cruise is going to die doing one of those movies. He is nuts. He actually is nuts. I mean, does his own stunts nuts. And those are crazy stunts. Hey, you know what? He's one of the few that still do it. So I am all for it. Oh, yeah. I salute him. Those things. Yep. <laughs> him and Keanu. Um, I have all the respect in the world for Keanu. Oh, Keanu like, does his own stunts? For the most part. On the John Wick stuff? I couldn't see anyone else I, with oh, John Wick. I haven't seen John Wick. One, nah, two, three, four. Okay, yeah. but I feel like you wouldn't, Jess wouldn't like it because of the subject matter of the first one. You know? I know. No, he I, would. I, he would. He knows what happens. I know. I know what but like, he, he's very, he loves animals. So I feel like it, that'd be hard for him. Like, isn't that a like a red flag for you? It is, and that's why I wrestle with it constantly. I know what happens. I'm aware that it's just a movie, but it's like the first five minutes, right? So if I can just hold on and make it through the first five minutes, I've got four yeah, great just movies. put the movie on, go in the other room and eat your almonds, and then... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like the first 15 minutes, and you feel some sense of peace after because you get to see Keanu Reeves just unleash holy hell on all the guys that messed with him. You don't you don't you don't see it happen either. It, you don't. It happens don't like know. it's like a cut scene. It's like a cut, and then you see the dog laying there. I remember there being some audio though, like a whimper. Ah! Yeah, there is the yeah. There is. Ah! Well, you can just go watch Marley and Me. Maybe yeah. Oh, oh my god, no. that was the wrong no, no, movie no, no, to no. do alone on a flight after my dog died. Oh, oh I would never. I didn't know that that's how it ends. I thought it was like a dog movie, so I was like, this. Will Any cheer dog me up. movie's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's old Yeller. Yeah. Um, oh, Derek's mad. What the f? People haven't seen the Goonies. This classic '80s flick. That's like right? saying you haven't I seen Star Wars. In the 80s. You're putting Goonies up with Star Wars? 
bold statement. Oh, yeah, because there's a, a Goonies land at Disneyland. There's a Goonies land at Disneyland? <laughs> no, no. no it's, he's, it's not the same as Star Wars. Oh, right. Uh, actually, Airplane's a classic great movie. <laughs> oh, gosh. Josh Greathouse with a great John Wick quote. It's oh. not who you did, son. It's who you did it to. Oh, oh my God. The first scene, the John Wick. When the when the father finds out that it was John Wick's yeah. doll, and then all you hear on the end of the phone is, oh. And then he hangs up the phone. Oh, my well, God. Goodness, even the son don't goes to don't go. give away too much. You should, I'm going to watch John. Actually, I'm, I'm going to watch The Iron oh. Giant tonight, but I'm going to watch I'm gonna John watch. tomorrow. All four John Wicks, because the fourth oh, one is a God. is badass. I like the fourth one more than the third one. Yeah. I thought the fourth one was fantastic. Oh, the fourth one's so good. The fourth one was my favorite movie last year. Do you guys like the theory that John Wick is about the stages of grief? Like each movie oh, represents one of the like the first one's like anger, and then there's bargaining where he makes all the deals. Like uh the stages of grief represent the John Wick movies. I thought that was a dope theory. I don't I don't get that deep into it. I just want to see him shoot people in the head. I don't want to see a fifth one. <laughs> Because I think for, the fourth one ends it perfectly. But if there is a fifth one, I'll be there opening night. I'd be down for a fifth one that's a prequel. The Baba Yaga. No, but Derek Taylor's right. Like Goonies is like a rite, a rite of passage to see that movie. It, it, it would hit you different if you saw it when you were like 12. Yeah. But like, I'm, that was I'm like a like, like, coming now. of age movie, dude. For me, Peter Stormare as the devil is my favorite version of the devil. He's I'm in Constantine. Constantine. Yeah. But I love Peter Stormare. Peter oh, Stormare yeah, that's right. Awesome. How about uh, Julia Garner as a silver surfer? <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot. I, I'm not going to judge She's it. a good actress. She is a very good actress. And everyone else they've cast in that movie seems great. Like The this thing is the actor worst is casting perfect. ever of a movie. I, I didn't like the cast. I don't like the idea of it being in the 60s. Them making Shalabah Silver Surfer and not Norrin Rad. Shalabah. Everything is just X's. Is everything is just a loss. You don't I, like the thing casting? The thing casting is amazing in my mind. He's great. It's just the thing. He, he doesn't know if he has the voice for the thing, but like he's gonna be CGI in ninety five percent of the movie. I would be lying if I said, who, if I said, yeah, I knew who Shalabah is. I have no fucking clue who that character was. I don't either. Four hours ago. I've got Galactus standing right here with all his heralds. And I don't know who Shalabal, Shalabal, Bing Dong is. Shalabal is Norman Rad's girlfriend that he pines over and cries about all the time in the book. Oh, so it's his girlfriend? Okay. Right. Oh, huh. Okay. Uh, wait, there was something here. Oh, this is important. I've been watching the Police Squad show for the first time. Where are you <laughs> watching it, Doc Elevator? Police Squad was such a great television show. Yeah. It was so great. And and Doctor Elevator, I love the Naked Gun movies. Those were like my first like those types of like ironic kind of comedy films that I, I saw as a kid. Slapstick. I loved all of them. Yeah. Do you Naked Gun, Naked Gun Two and a Half, Naked Gun Thirty Three and a Third, with OJ Simpson and all of them before he was like a. a Murderer. Uh, awesome. Where Doc, where are you watching Police Squad? Do you guys remember the Miami Vice pilot? Directed by Michael Mann. How great of a pilot is that? I... For the first Miami Vice or like the newer one? The 80s. From the 80s. Oh, I've Vice. never saw Miami Vice. Oh, dude. Watch the pilot at least. It's done by Michael Mann. It is so good. I'm sure I saw it back when it was on. It has uh, such a great moment. Oh, I can't start next Imaginots one out of 20 because he hasn't dropped the second one yet. Uh, oh, I saw this movie. Tim Curry is the, is, uh, as the devil is fantastic and legend. Uh, I like no, the police Academy movies too. I have not seen those. See, I think I may have aged out of, getting into the Goonies. I was already in my 20s when the Goonies came out. Mm -hmm. That can be our next show together. We both watch the Goonies and then we wear bowling shirts and talk about the Goonies. <laughs> You're not selling me on that next show very well. You just uh, do it shirtless. Ooh, well, that's no only for our, our Discord members if they pay a fee. <laughs> that's that's the, uh, the Omni Bros after, after Dark shows. 
Oh, no, Reaper knows Shalabala is Norrin Rad's beloved. Um, uh, Reaper's also been watching Buster Keaton direct a starring rooms. He also did his own stunts, and they were crazy stunts. Uh, okay. Born in 73. Hmm. I remember Shalaba pops up in the Silver Surfer omnibus by by uh, All Red and Slot. So does she? But she wasn't. She wasn't the Silver Surfer. She his wife shows up. Um, no, because then she like she became like the ruler of Zen Law at one. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, uh, the runtime on Naked Gun movies. Oh yeah, there were only like seven episodes of Police Squad before ABC canceled it. I love Miami Vice. Have both soundtracks on a record. Okay. Uh, you know, you know who else shows up in Roadhouse? Sam Elliott, Jess. Oh, with his mustache? No, he does not have the mustache in it. He's got the five o'clock shadow in it. Yeah, it's one of the rare appearances of Sam Elliott without yeah. a, without a mustache. And he looks awesome. Well, I if you're gonna watch, uh, well, here's a. Here's uh, next Imaginot's take on Wizard of Oz. Unless you're intent on also showing Wizard of Oz at home to your daughters, I would sooner just wait to see it theatrically for your first viewing, although it holds up fine to home viewing. Uh, the film is so potent that I think you'd find the theatrical experience nothing short of transcendent, especially on a huge screen. Okay. So, while I don't disagree with Next Imagine, let me just say I grew up watching it once a year. On once Thanksgiving. A year. Uh, it was a big deal. Every kid in school knew that night was special because that's when Wizard of Oz was on. Is it like that's a- right. Back when there was three channels and a, a wire hanger at the top of my TV. When yeah, I- and you saw all of it black and white. You didn't know it was even color halfway through. I didn't. In third, in third grade, I found out some kids said, "Yeah, it was really cool when it went to color." And I said, "It went to color. Color? It goes into color." And I went home and I said, "Why isn't this in color <laughs> to the black and white TV?" Just do you remember? Like, do you remember when the TV would just turn off when you'd get the national anthem and then oh, would, at yeah. midnight? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you'd get the test pattern. It'd play mm-hmm. the national anthem. You'd get the test pat- pattern, and then it was just snow. Yeah. Until like 5 a.m. Yeah, I remember I used to wake up early enough where it would play the national anthem and like raise the flag and all that stuff. And then Three's Company would start or whatever. Wow, Three's Company. Oh, they'd play the national anthem and then there'd be uh, TV on? Yeah. Because it was just a big gap when I was growing up. There'd be nothing on. Right, no, no, I'm talking about I got up early. I used to get up early in the morning, like at five o'clock when they would start TV again. Oh, 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 okay. And they would do like the national anthem and raise the flag and all that oh, patriotic cool stuff. Okay. And then it'd be like Three's Company or whatever was on at the time. I remember oh, when I had to go to Channel Three to get video games on the TV. That was the thing, right? I'd three or four, depending on how you had your TV set. Yep. I had to do that. Yeah, that was annoying. Uh, hmm. I just started watching Mod Squad. That was a boss show. Uh, if you guys like John Wick, Monkey Man is out this week, starring and directed by Dev Patel and produced by Jordan Peele. I'm, I want to see that so bad. I, yeah, so bad. I feel like I've been... Are you the one that's been telling us about it, Lou? Monkey it wasn't Man? Me. No, it wasn't me, but it looks really good. Dev Patel, I think he broke his arm or his wrist doing the movie. Uh... Yeah, I've been hearing about this. Produced by Jordan Peele. I definitely Yeah, I did. Don't don't shame me. Yeah, we had a black and white TV. Has <laughs> anyone seen the new Godzilla movie that just came out this week? Is that one worth seeing? I haven't seen it. I haven't I haven't been able to go to the movies in months, man. I still haven't seen Dune 2, and I'm dying to go see it. But after seeing know. Godzilla minus one, I want to go see some goofy Godzilla silly movie. I could want to see that. I want to see another type of Godzilla plus one minus one rather. Yeah. Are you yeah. reap? Are you dragging me that I had black and white TV reaps turned on me? <laughs> uh, 
I've got stuck with black and white TVs before. Like I'd go to my grandparents' house and have to play Mario on black and white TVs. Ooh. Ew. I think black and white's kind of cool sometimes. Like the Mad Max Chrome edition that's in black and white or the, I do the Logan in that. black and white. Walking Dead in black and white. That's great. I do, I do want to see Mad Max in Chromium. Do you have to you have to buy that or is it streaming anywhere? It, the Chromium's not streaming anywhere, I think. Um you have to but buy it. it's like an extra. I have it on iTunes. I think honestly, I think Apple TV is showing Mad Max for free right now if you have like the subscription service, and then that might give you the black and white edition. So I would check into Ooh. that. They put All a bunch right. of like really good movies on Apple TV Plus for free for a limited time. I have to remember it's on uh it's on Amazon for four bucks. To yeah. run. The, the chromium version? Yeah. Four bucks. It's worth it. I, I bought think... Battle Battle Star Alita or whatever that was for four bucks. I don't know where you buy, but Apple I think has the movie for four ninety nine, and that would come with both the regular and the, the digital one, the, the black and white one. Hmm. What was that movie you guys had me buy? Battle Somebody Alita. I didn't Battle. like that movie. It was too much was going on. I bought that for five bucks. I got FOMO'd into that because it was everybody said you should get it. That doesn't mean I watched it, but I don't even remember know what this means. To to in you in you Yasha end credits. This is an anime thing. Um, oh. if, you, if you were a kid and you grew up in the two thousands, um, you would have this thing called Adult Swim, and they would show anime oh. overnight on Cartoon Network. And a lot of us would wake up to the sound of the introduction to Inuyasha around three or four in the morning because we forgot to turn off the TV. So it's kind of a <laughs> meme. So okay, so that's a shared memory. Mm -hmm. Monkey Man looks good. Okay. I still, oh, I know what I have to do. I never finished the second half that I of RRR. Oh I my god! Through it, that's like two years ago. But I remember everything. Triple R is amazing. I know we talked about it so much. I love that movie. That's what I need to watch. You need uh, to also watch Talk Blockers with John Cena. Oh, I like I, I, that's supposed to be hilarious too. It's awesome. Walker, Walkers is good. It's up there with Game Night for like. I love good game recent night. comedy movies. Yeah, Game um, Night is so much fun, man. Oh, what's Game Night? How do I not know about it? I gotta use a restaurant. Game, game Night is uh, from the people that did Dungeons and Dragons. So it's John Francis Daly, I think. Um, but it's it's they think they're playing a game night, like a murder mystery, but it's really happening or it's not happening or it's a game. And it's got Rachel McAdams. It's got Todd from Breaking Bad, the blonde Jesse Plemons. Um, he, there's just some classic moments. It's a, it's an awesome comedy and you don't know what's really happening or what's a game or what's not, or what's a real murder. And it's, it's a hilarious movie. Um, Hmm. How about I'll... super troopers, Jess? Have you seen super troopers? Uh, super troopers. What I've was only the... seen the intro and I've seen the intro to that movie like 15 times. Super troopers. What movie am I thinking of where Doogie Hauser was dressed up as a Harold and Kumar? No, 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 no. Uh, the other troopers. Uh, is Super Troopers the one with the invasion of the giant bugs? No, that's Starship Troopers. Oh, st okay, that's what I'm thinking of. What's Super Troopers? Super Troopers is about the this small police squad in like what, like New Hampshire, Connecticut, somewhere up there, and they got nothing to do because it's a small like hole in the wall town. And they just cause trouble and get into like crazy situations, do a lot of drugs, stuff like that. So uh, it's a comedy, dark it's comedy. comedy. It's 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 hilarious. Uh, that's one I would watch by myself and not with upper management. Is this another kind of sex drivey thing? It's not dirty or anything like that. There's no TNA or anything. Uh, really. how how does it compare to like super bad? Is it is it funny like that? Yeah, it's more of a more funny like a. It's a more sex drivey comedy, like dirty raunchy humor. Okay, I'll I'll have to see that by myself. Yeah, which is fine. 
My right. dinner just got here, so I'm going to bounce, guys. But thanks for having me on again. It was good well, hanging out. Where can we find you when you're not here on the internet? Where can we find you? As Kid Omnidog or Teen Omnidog, I'm very rarely a guest on the Omnidog channel. <laughs> Anywhere else, not important. Hint? Just kidding. No, uh, you can find me at The Brave and the Boys on YouTube. Um, we're on TikTok. We're on Discord. And yeah, we like talking about comics. And um, we're doing a book club on the 6th for Reckless volume one so if anyone nice. has reckless and wants to be a part of that it's a super easy breezy read and wait cool. i bet james already has your discord up probably gonna link your discord instead he's like oops uh oh no i'm wrong oh and linda carter's in super troopers wow ah, so there it is raven boys discord there you text go me a thumbs up if we're getting those batman bowling shirts or not you know just keep me, keep me posted. <laughs> uh good having you buddy bye guys later Thanks. buddy uh super troopers has brian cox omnipop uh jess you would love super troopers that sounds fun it takes place in vermont okay mm -hmm. yeah uh how about some of these comic book uh bowling shirts i like these uh this, i don't know how you pronounce the name of the website rsvlt oh, yeah brisvilt yeah yeah but they're always pricey man like 70 bucks is 70 I, bucks that's where i have uh like my avengers and spider-man shirts from yeah i can only get like one every six months if that yeah now the hard daddy one there with the red stripe that appeals to me, but those I bought one of those before. They're cheaply made compared to Rizvilts. Yeah, they look like a like pretend silk or something. Yeah, Rizvilts are really well made. Uh, yeah, the Rizvilts uh, site has tons of great comic book uh, shirts like that. Yeah, I always see this stuff pop up. I'm always like, man, 70 bucks. I know, but it's a high quality shirt. I I know exactly what you mean though. Uh what was I gonna what was I gonna ask Lou about? Uh mm. not super troopers. Um what was the murder mystery one? Oh, uh board games. What's it called? Uh, game, game, game night, night. yeah. Is that something I could watch with Patty, or is that more of just me? That's more you. Okay. Yeah. All right. You and Patty finished Ted Lasso, right? You guys yeah, agree? we did. Yeah. Oh, my. Perfect show. Yeah. Perfect television show. Yeah, that's such a good show. Yeah, we were wildly happy. Uh, What are we starting next? She's jamming me up because we never finished Modern Family 10 years ago. What, what the <laughs> I uh, something for you recently that you and Patty could watch, and I can't. Oh yeah, good. We need a. Um, I don't know what it was. We need a good suggestion. Ted Lasso was perfect, but she likes. She likes. I mean, as long as it's not too dark. Yeah. She she because there's lots of stuff we started, but you know, like uh, True Detective. Yeah. It, it just got too dark for her. Yeah, it's very bleak. It's a very bleak show. Which I mean, I can watch and be happy, but she, she, yeah, Ted Lasso. She had on uh, Poor Things the other day, mm -hmm. and I thought it looked great, but it took a weird turn for her, so she turned it off. Mm -hmm. But I want to see that. Yeah, there's always Quigley Down Under. Is that the one with Tom Selleck? I think so. Or you can even do Doctor Quinn, Medicine Woman. Wow. I remember watching that with Jane Seymour. Yeah. I only watched that because um, Simpsons made fun of it. <laughs> my, my my sister used to watch that a lot. Her and then her and my dad would watch uh, uh, what's uh, On the Prairie? Little House on the Prairie? Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adult Swim is very high in my childhood memories list. Yes. I miss staying up overnight in the summer as a child of the 90s and then turning on Mr. Wizard's World on Nick at 5 a.m. each day and watching him send 50,000 volts of electricity through a pickle. 
<laughs> I remember those days. It was Mr. Wizard. Uh, we had. I remember it was Mr. Wizard. We had a Captain Kangaroo for a little bit. Mm. And then later on, it was like Beekman's World. Those are like the educational like science shows we used to watch. I've been in a real documentary kick lately um, for some reason. Uh, it's just, I've been kind of just, while I'm at work and typing stuff, I listen to documentaries and stuff like that. I've, I think what kicked it off was because I watched that Nickelodeon doc. Uh, oh, ooh, that I want to watch it, but I don't because yeah. I know it's going to ruin like, well, my Nickelodeon it, experience. Yeah, it, it'll that was really horrible. It'll, it'll really mess up what you thought of those shows as a kid. And it, it's whatever you thought before and whatever you heard online, you know, because pe- stuff has come out in the last few years about Dan Snyder and things like that. It's way worse. Yeah. This stuff has always been like whispers in, in, in Hollywood, right? We always yeah. hear about like Corey oh. Feldman and all these other little late child actors, it's, you know, it's having the worst experiences. Think, and whatever you think and whatever you've heard online is way worse than what, what happened at Nickelodeon. Yeah, especially to Drake Bell. Drake Bell has an entire – it's episode three. He has an entire episode that's dedicated to him. It's like 45 minutes. I stopped after that. There's four episodes. Yeah. I stopped after that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go to bed. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll finish the a fourth episode the next day. I, I couldn't get through. I, well, I stopped. It was, it's the, dark. It is the, the stuff that came out about Amanda Bynes and, and Dan Snyder, how she was like – yeah, got like, you know, pregnant at thirteen yeah. and had an abortion or whatever. Yeah, they don't they don't touch on any of that stuff. Um, they kind of gloss over a lot of the Amanda Bynes stuff, but you get more context of why some of these child actors are the way that they are now. And man, oof, mm. yeah, was not was not an easy watch. Have you guys seen the photos of John Bernthal and Charlie Cox on the set of Daredevil: Born Again? Let's no, I stay away from that stuff. I I don't like spoilers. I don't like set photos. I don't I don't care until the show comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm right. so I'm so excited for that show though. Euro Trip and not another teen movie are raunchy earlier t- early era two thousand teen movies. I did not expect to enjoy, but did. Uh oh! Oh, I just read Somna by Clunan and Lote this morning. It's extremely well drawn. And colored, super sexy. The story and characters didn't draw me in, though. Mm, that's too bad because I, those are two of my favorite creators. Lowe's not another teen movie, guys. I'm, I'm gonna get going. I gotta walk the dog and get ready. Okay, well, it's almost been two hours, so we'll wind this up. Um, thanks for being here, Lou. Take care, peace, and love. Good night, everybody. Good night, Lou. Uh, I did not get to see Hannah Waddingham home for Christmas. Ted Lasso Christmas special. I saw the Ted Lasso Christmas episode. I don't remember the Christmas special either. Uh, yeah, and I I still need to see my Hallmark movies. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Good old Christmas movies about love. <laughs> Tokyo Vice. I've heard that's supposed to be good. Well, let's make sure we talk about InStockTrades.com where you can get your collected editions from 30% all the way up to like 80% off in the red tag sale sometimes. Uh, Don't forget your 2% loyalty discount that gets tacked on there. Sometime in the month, we're going to be giving away a $50 gift card courtesy of InStockTrades.com. $50 or more in an order gets you free shipping in the United States. Fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's just stocktrades.com. Yeah. Uh, beep, beep, do. Do, 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 do. Oh, I used to watch Magic School Bus with Kelly. Yeah. I love I watch all that. Bill That's Nye, right. Ghost Riders. Yeah. I loved magic watching that. Uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman is streaming on Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, Some of that old, like, we're talking about old, like, the black and white stuff. Like, I Love Lucy is still hilarious. I agree with that. That's I'm glad you so enjoy that. Still so good. 
Ted Lasso Christmas special is free on YouTube is a Ted Lasso stop motion Christmas special. Huh. Okay. I have five not minutes. They got that. five minutes. Stop motion Christmas special. Uh, did you guys see the Spider-Man short on YouTube from the creators of the Spider-Verse films? No. What's that address? What do I, what do I search for on YouTube? I'm terrible at searching. Is Ghost Rider available to watch anywhere? I'm going to look. The, oh, did you see the I Love Lucy movie on Amazon? Was that... <clears throat> Was that, uh, oh, that was with actor. Okay. That was about the making of I Love Lucy and stuff. There's been a couple of those. There's, I know there's like a Desi Arnaz one. I've seen some of them because I know I, that's when I learned that Lucy was the one that really pushed and saved uh, Star Trek. Star Trek, right. I didn't realize that was a Desi Lu like production thing. Uh, Spider Verse, The Spider Within on YouTube. Okay. Thank you. And Kane says Ghost Rider is available on YouTube, where I think also Wishbone is available. <laughs> Wishbone. That's, that's <laughs> the show Kelly and I loved watching. And Arthur. Arthur, yeah. Arthur's on Amazon, I think. My kids watch it. I love Arthur. I loved Arthur. So did Kelly. That was great. Uh, well, it's 10 o'clock here. Almost 10 o'clock. Gabe, where can they find you on the internet? I'm here on Omni Bros on our channel Mondays and Wednesdays, and this Saturday, uh, Lou and I are doing the After Dark, where we'll be talking about the situation with Ed Piscor and everything that happened leading up to the and tragedy that, that happened. That's Patreon. That'll be on Patreon. Yep. And and what um, what time is that? Uh, so it'll be Saturday, five p.m. Pacific time. So 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Eastern time. Yeah. Here's my Discord. Thank you, James. I was answering a lot of fun questions in uh, Discord today. I can't wait for Blumhouse to get the rights to Ghost Rider and make it into a horror movie about a ghost that stalks children by taunting them with messages from beyond the grave. No, he helps them learn how to read. <laughs> and solve crime. Bowie, what are you what what's happening there? Yeah, psycho. <laughs> you can find me on Omnidog's Vault on uh YouTube, Omnidog's underscore vault on uh Instagram, where I'm gonna be Instagramming my trip to Third Eye Comics with the very fine condition family tomorrow. I gotta get to bed because they're getting here early so we can road trip down there. So uh peace and my Discord where it's fun. Peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you all so much for watching. We appreciate you all. Peace and love. Peace and love.